a new edition of Imagine More, the show. And um, we had a great show. Like I said, last week, we were going to talk about Title 42. And we're also going to talk about um, our new elected Jacksonville mayor here in Florida, which is pretty awesome. Donna Deacon, which is, um, we're going to, I really don't know much about her. So we're going to explore her and where she stands on a lot of issues. Um, so we're going to dive deep into that. So with that being said, I'm going to let Seth do a quick intro and then we'll dive deep into Title 42. How's it going, everybody? Pretty much the story this week is, uh, I mean, Republicans kind of falling apart in this this uh, special election because they also did very poorly in a, in a in a district they weren't expected to as, do as badly in Colorado. Yep. So pretty much everyone on election Twitter is posting nonstop about how conservatives are just dropping the bag once again every election, which I don't know. It, 2024 is kind of the, the one that really matters, but. They're definitely not looking very united or yeah it looks like friends. yeah it looks like there's a growing trend where um the tw- it, it looks like a growing trend where democrats are really gaining ground um and i think it's just really because of the republican policies they've been so extreme that people just don't buy into it you know you know you have abortion rights and gay rights and all these different policies that are attacking people, the majority of America doesn't like that. And I think that's really, really what's killing the Republican Party right now. Yeah, they're they're playing way more to their to their base than the Democratic Party is, which I have a lot of problems with the Democrats not playing towards their base, but at least yeah. it's helping their electoral chances in the short term. <sighs> Moderatism definitely works to an extent making make it it's not even being moderate it's just making the other other side look more radical which we don't really have to do much but just play clips of republicans talking about like what they actually believe because the republican party is a radical party they are not in touch with americans they don't have any common sense the way that they used to portray themselves it's just sort of like deep into a culture war that you would only understand if you listen to fox news or yep. at least people that listen to Fox News. Yeah, and honestly, that's what it is. I mean, and they're just losing. They're losing, and they're going to continue to lose unless they switch their policies around, you know? It's just, but... I don't think it's even their policies. It's their rhetoric because Republicans don't care about Republican policy. No, no they well, just It's all a culture war. If they knew how conservatives actually felt on or actually voted on issues... The, the voting demographics would change, definitely. Well, I think that the rhetoric is kind of like in line with their um, their po- well, the policies they're putting in the forefront, which is social issues. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, by them sticking to these social issues and trying to drive a wedge to Americans, you can tell that most Americans are not really how would I say we're not really divided when it comes to social issues. Yeah, I mean, reality is it's like there's a Christian base that the Republicans cater to and they have their viewpoints and they're always going to have their viewpoints. I don't think that's going to change. Yeah. Christians, Christian voters tend to unite on anything there socially is. conservative or more like reactionary to liberal policies. Yeah. But that they're not changing. They're not gaining a vote by talking about, or going to extremes of these social policies, they're just kind of consolidating their base. Yeah, they're just saying this. They're talking to the same people. So when they lose, when you see them losing these, these elections, it's because they can't get anybody into the party to vote for the Republicans, because the vast majority of Americans don't believe that the rhetoric. So they're gonna have some serious problems. They're gonna have to change. And go a complete different direction. What they've been doing in terms of um, rhetoric goes. Um, I don't want them to. I want them to just keep doing what they're doing because that means there's a yeah easy walk through for 2024. I but if they're serious about you know want to win the White House, they have to definitely move messages. And they can't elect DeSantis because that's no. he's falling <laughs> yeah. apart all around. Yeah, it's bad. It's like I've been watching TikToks and then people was like. These videos, they're like, where's all the workers at? <laughs> because a lot of these farms out in Florida, people, 
a lot of people don't know, we just passed a very intensive immigration bill here. Um, like it's so bad, like if an, Im an illegal immigrant goes to the hospital, he there's a chance he can get deported. That's how bad the immigration policy is here. Horrifying. Yeah, and now it's so bad that the um, immigrants are leaving. They're leaving Florida and they're just going to different states. And now we have a lot of people, you know, Florida's, yeah, we have big cities, but we're very agricultural. Um, majority, I think two thirds of states are really agricultural, one third is really big cities. And, two, and they're complaining, they have no workers. They have no workers to work the fields. Um, so um, no workers to, they're on construction fields. So a lot of projects are getting left behind. And so it's causing issues with our economy. And that is overall, to me, the biggest issue with DeSantis. He's, he's a rhetoric king, but oh, I should say rhetoric jester. <laughs> the king <laughs> is <Trump>. Trump king. <laughs> yeah, uh, the rhetoric is, and he's saying a lot of rhetoric, but his policies are just so bad. And yeah, I cut myself off because I see Justice logging in. Yeah, Justice Justice hopping on. I actually didn't know he'd be available, but yeah, I'm glad you're here to, to talk as long as Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, I was just talking about how crazy Always. DeSantis' policies have been in Florida, and I think it's going to cost him the election, honestly. Um, yeah, we can only hope. Yeah, because I think he's just uh, you know delayed his his he's although he's been in Iowa, but I feel like he's he can't run. His his poll numbers are too bad against against Trump. So I'd imagine he's trying to consolidate his his support and save that for a better election. But I, for some reason, he's hanging out in Iowa. So I'm not sure what's going on. No, he's going to definitely run. I mean, I, I always so? knew he was going to run. Yeah, I always knew he was going to run. But the problem is, I don't, I don't think he expected his poll numbers to be this bad um, yeah. when he decided to run. I think he thought that he would be a clear choice against Trump and that the Republican Party would gravitate towards him because they, I guess his estimation that the Republican Party was never going to vote for Trump again. And yeah. so he's like, well, I'm going to run because I'm going to be the alternative. And I've seen this done before. Ted Cruz did this. Marco Rubio did this. They try to be this alternative to Trump. It doesn't work. Trump is Trump. It's like he's a polarizing figure, and that's just who he is. Um, you either hate him or you like him, but you still, you still have a decision. We know who he is. The problem with DeSantis is you don't really know who DeSantis is. You know that he talks rhetoric. You know he does all these crazy things. But at the same time, he hasn't really shown he can govern. Yeah, he's these. definitely made his name based on, like, in reaction to Trump. He hasn't set his own standards for anything. He His policies directly refl reflect yeah. what's popular with the Trump base and the ways that he can separate himself rhetorically. Mm -hmm. What were you saying? Yeah, he's a follower, not a leader. Exactly. And there's um, there's some speculation. I feel like I don't know how accurate or where they even derive this information from, but apparently Trump's VP list has pretty much gone down to Christy Nome, Marjorie Taylor Green, and Carrie Lake, from what I've he heard. So I'd, uh, I'm interested Mary, to see how that turns out. Marjorie Taylor Green will never get him elected. No, for sure not. I think Who's he just sees her as loyal and shit. But so I'd, I'd imagine that's more. That part is more. It's less true. But Christy so Nome, Carrie Lake, Lake would definitely make sense. Christine why he would pick Norm, like how do you Christy Nome. Yeah, who is she? She is the governor of North Dakota. I think it's South North Dakota, Dakota. South Dakota. South Dakota. Yeah. Either way, yeah, she's Nobody definitely cares. doing a Sarah Palin vibe. I feel like she's more definitely more electable than Carrie Lake. She's Carrie, she, Lake. Carrie Lake is insane. She's like Nazi yeah, Karen. Is, is this a woman that lost in Arizona? Yeah. Yeah, there's no way she's gonna be VP. I don't think so. I mean, well, that, I wouldn't say that's true. It's not up to the people. It's up to Trump. But Trump would never elect someone that's really him. No, no I see what you're saying. I'm yeah, like, he's, he, he, I don't he, think that he sees her as un, as unelectable or something like that. He probably believes a bullshit lie that it was rigged in some way because Arizona was also rigged for him or some shit. Yeah, but some, she won't. She, she can't win a general election. She's a she's a 
Yeah, know, but Trump know. thinks he can win a general election, so he can, I don't but trust he Trump's win. instinct to do what's best for him. The one thing I do know about Trump, his rhetoric is not in line with his decision making. He's a very business minded person. He knows that he can't have two crazy people on the ticket. He knows I think he he'd probably be more uh, consider the fact that she didn't actually win the election, and he's like, I like winners. So I don't yeah, know. but she's just crazy. Like the world, the way that the media portrays her, and the way that most people portray her, they think she's crazy. That's true, and also I do I, I agree mostly with your point that she would try to like take the spotlight in some way. Yeah, I feel like I she's don't... kind of too attention seeking. I feel like Christy Nome is kind of like in line with him enough, but also like she doesn't seem radical because she just seems like a regular lady and she likes guns and shit. She's just from the country, and also like I don't know, she's won elections and she's popular amongst the Republican base across the board. So I could understand that pick, but. Plus, I feel like she would fall in line a lot more than... Not that Carrie Lake would ever disagree with Trump, but she wouldn't try to take the spotlight the same way. Yeah, she's uh, 51 years old. She's young. I'm looking at her now. Yeah, she'd probably be more likable than the rest of them. Yeah. In terms of, like, on the national scene. But, I don't know. I I think Trump is definitely... He's going to have his handful if he doesn't figure out who he put on his ticket to make him normalize him. And that's the problem. I feel like Trump is a lib, just like the rest of, just like the rest of them. I think he's going to try to pick somebody for like identity politics reasons for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I think he's just going to try to check the boxes and he can be like, Oh, we're the racist party. Oh, we're the, anti- the sexist party. I have a woman on my ticket. He's going to do the same shit. He's yeah, exactly. Distract yeah. from himself. Totally. Well, not that he won't bring attention to himself as well, but well, that's what he's known for. Is being attention to himself. <laughs> I just don't see yeah. this being, I don't, I think it's going to be a pretty easy primary, honestly. A primary yeah. for the Republicans, yeah. yeah. I think Trump's gonna walk away with it. I think it's yeah. Biden's plan. I don't. I don't see none of them. I see Nikki Haley flaming she, out in Iowa. I see. I don't think she'll even make it that far. She'll probably drop out before that. But yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I just see them all flaming out in Iowa. I think Trump will easily win Iowa and. And then it will fall in line for him from there. Tim Scott will probably stay in the race, but he'll be getting like 2%. He'll stay in the race for South Carolina. I could and see uh, Tim Scott being a VP pick, too. I was just going to say, yeah, uh, he could be a VP pick. That's a nice, that's a nice, a nice pick. The, especially when we're losing a lot of the... Um, conservative black voters, right? We're losing a lot of conservative black voters to the Republican Party right now. Which I feel like is inevitable at some point. That it's going to be a less, uh, a much more diversified Republican Party, especially because we are becoming a less white country in general. So, it's becoming more diversified. And a lot of the, how do you say, it? a lot of the traditional black Democrats, um, they tend to vote Democrats anyway. Um, yeah. They're still going to vote Democrat. I just think a little bit of the younger conservative Democrats are switching over the Republican Party. Yeah, a lot of young black men, I think. Yeah. Definitely vibe with Trump. But I mean by a lot, I mean like comparatively. It's still like eighty five percent against him, but whatever. Right, right. Like fifteen percent having issues can I No. I oh you you're, you're cutting out a little bit for me. It's just it's uh it's it's yellow right now. Not not green or red, so but if you're talking right now, I'm not hearing anything, so. I hear you a little bit. But not right now. Because <laughs> it's like every time. But you're in the same room every time, right in front of your pool, right, Jesse? <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. It's kind of it's doing robot noises. Yeah, me too. 
You're doing robot yeah. noises again. Sounds like you're auto tuned. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I w- I'd love to hear Jesse Jesse's music album with his drums and he's doing auto tune. Yeah, if we have any speeches of him, we can just make an auto tune beat out of it. Oh hell yeah, we got speeches for sure. <laughs> Some of the for old sure. debates against Adam Hattersley. I don't know who that is, but it sounds yeah. fascinating. They were, they were the establishment Democrats. Okay. That per capita, Jesse wiped the floor with them. Because <laughs> he had a million dollars and Jesse had 10 grand. And we were only like down by like 6% to him. So. Wow. Yeah. Per capita. Yeah. You know someone asked me the other day, they're like, are, am I going to run yeah. again? Oh, you know I, mean? you're, you're, I just heard you now, finally. You said, are you going to run again? Yeah, that's what I'm going to run again. And I was like, it's, you're, you're, you're half, your voice is half coming through. <laughs> that sounded auto-tuned. So, better? politics. Oh, I heard you say, is it better? If you talk, then we'll be able to tell better. What about now? Okay, it seems to be consistent. Seems This seems like a good spot. Yeah, it moves a lot. lot it's, it's a little blurry, but that's about it. It's blurry now? Oh, it's better. It's, it's clearing up as you said that. Like magic. Okay, okay. Welcome awesome. back. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. been the question of the last month is am I going to run again? And I'm like, I don't, there's nothing to run, you know? There's no seat yeah. for me to run. So I'm just kind of like, want to do my best to like help the community in Tampa and like try to do a lot of not for profit stuff. Yeah. Because it's just like, rain takes a lot out of you, man. It's, it's so draining. Oh, yeah. And it's like, and then I had the congressional race. That was even more, that was to me. I think that drained me out so much that I had no more energy for the state race. When yeah, I no. to the state. Plus, we've been preparing the entire time for the congressional for, race. For the congressional race, and the last second, we're just like, "Hey, look at this! Oh, St. Petersburg! Ah, you yeah. should vote for." <laughs> and then we tried to jump into St. Pete, and then the the person that was incumbent was jumped into St. Pete. So yeah. now we're fighting an incumbent, and it was just a nightmare. Yeah, it was like, but so I don't. I mean, right now I don't know about running again. You should you know? definitely take take this cycle off. If if there's gonna be a race, I think it will be pretty obvious. You know exactly. And I don't think there's. It's not obvious right now. I just don't yeah. see it. I mean, the only open seat right now would be running for United States Senator, and we don't have the clout. The time, the money, nor the name ID to do something like that. Yeah. And so, so right now I'm just gonna sit out and help a lot of people locally try to get elected. Yeah, you got to get the Democrats back in back in contention, and then you can just use that momentum and maybe, maybe, maybe we'll find a spot for you. But exactly, I think it's really gonna be, come down to this. I haven't heard anybody running for the United States Senate race, so whoever decides to do that, I think I'm gonna put my support behind them and try to help. If them they're if they're good. Well, they have to be progressive, obviously. Yeah. But no more was, Charlie Crists. That was such a bad experiment. <laughs> <laughs> I literally feel like the Democratic Party in Florida was like, we're gonna recreate the Charlie, we're gonna recreate the Joe Biden here. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a former Republican who was a governor of Florida as a Republican like ten years ago. And yeah, he got yeah. it. It was such a bad idea. Yeah. He's a good guy though. I've I've met him um I met him one time because he actually gave a speech in my school yeah. uh, when I was years ago. He's, not, he's actually not a bad guy, but he's seen solid. Like, yeah, he saw it's just that we had one new that he's he like, he's, he reminds me of like Joe Walsh. If yeah, you know who that is Joe Walsh is becoming like some sort of resist lib now, except he's like, yeah. Yeah, I don't even know where he is. He's a, a principled conservative who just, yeah, but I don't even know if Democrats he's identifying now. as conservative anymore. I don't think he necessarily would be. Yeah. He's like just some, he's like, there's a ton of Americans that are like 
somewhat more economically conservative and socially liberal, but not libertarian. Don't exactly. get me wrong. The libertarians yeah. think that they own that fucking demographic, but it's no, they're I really think, all just independents. Yeah, I think that it you hit that right now. Most people are liberally socially and um, conservative economically. And it's not so much that people are conservative economically. Yeah, I was going to say. But they're not pro-tax. Yeah, they don't like taxes. They like yeah. capitalism, but they like labor rights. They're kind of just down the middle on economics, but like they're kind of yeah, they're just down the middle both ways because they're not. They're also the type that would be like LGB without the T. Yeah. <laughs> that well, you know, it's, yeah. I mean that. Like I have no, I have no problem with the LGBTQ. I just think that um, I think what happened was that whole narrative got hijacked it by the Republican Party. Yeah, and definitely. It, and started making it. The one or two, three instances of stuff like uh, that's a little questionable. Yeah, and then it, it made it made the narrative of the whole entire LGBTQ movement, which is not. Yeah, I'm sure um, maybe one trans person has, has, other than that one mass shooting, has killed a person before, and I'm sure sure a trans person has possibly done bad things in other ways, but like it's their hatred is not of. The even acts of the trans people, they hate trans people because, like, straight people do all the same yeah. crimes all the time. They of don't, course, yeah. they don't talk about that as a scapegoat, yeah, exactly. to justify why they hate trans people, yeah. yeah they're exactly. just searching for evidence in support of a conclusion they've already made, yeah. That's an odd, especially with social media, that's what we all do, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. disgusting, yeah. We all do that, and it's like, let's Echo talk about chambers. Those- yeah, if we talk about issues, progressive issues win 90% of the time, if we're talking about issues. Now, if we start yeah. going off on a tangent about, you know, differences with them among ourselves um, and make that the focus, then, yeah, you're going to find there's going to be debate. We're going to stand with each other. But the reality is no person is ever the same, you know. We all have slight variations of what we yeah. believe, you know, and – and the Republican Party makes it their goal to make sure that that's the focus, the slight variations. Of yeah, various, you know why that is. Mm-hmm. I've heard I've heard it said before, but uh, like the reason the Republican Party is just clinging so hard to these culture war issues is because they don't actually have anything successful to run on besides that. They have yeah. uh, things that are polarizing and sensationalist because they can't just run on their actual policies because those are unpopular with people. They just need to manufacture some kind of panic that necessitates voting for them. It's really hard to uh, to market yourself on why rich people don't fair pay, why their taxation is not fair because it's like not the same percentage as really poor people. As if the solution is to make poor people pay like twice as much in taxes to 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 make up the cost, which it wouldn't because they don't have as much money. So it would just be, I mean, it's exactly what happened. Trump did the tax cuts. And then all of a sudden, why do we have a giant deficit? Whew. How come we don't have any money to fund our programs? How did that happen? Man, that tax cut, I tell you, like I still do parent, my parents' taxes and some close family members. Yeah. That tax cut is like so bi- so pro-business. It's not even funny. It's mm-hmm. like there's there used to be so many deductions in place to help. Give me one second, guys. Oh, you're good. Jesse will be back. Okay. Sweet. Anyways, tax, taxes. <laughs> taxes are theft, as always. But I think... It's extortion. I think... Uh, changed. It's been the theft same. Is a, theft what. isn't a giant crime compared to uh, exploitation, in my opinion. Depends on who you're stealing from. Yeah, well, taxes it, it is bad. exploitation. I'm back. Sorry about that. Had an exploitation <laughs> through an economic system that takes the money ex- exclusively from the labor, cuts that aspect out just to pay them like no wages so that they can't negotiate with other companies and find a better job. Yeah, That's but then sort of why wouldn't why wouldn't the solution in. be to abolish that system instead of just trying to procure more funding for what's enabling the system in the first place? I don't think it's as I don't I think it depends on how you tax. I mean I think it depends on other stuff cuz I think that the government has a responsibility to like 
enact a social wealth fund or something like that to, 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 to take the private ownership of society away and distribute it amongst the people like that sort of buying of assets, that sort of thing. Cause I, I, I think that just allowing the, all the ultra wealthy to have so much money is kind of going to just set us f- far back and we're never going to pass anything that will help the people because it's not in their interests. So I think, I think not only like, I don't think it's fair that the way they get the money in the first place, I don't think it's unfair to like make them pay for programs or pay for stuff that is retribution. Retribution. Redistribute it. I wasn't trying to use that word, but like a retribute. <laughs> I can't say that word. Retributive. <laughs> yes, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I'm trying to take yeah. back justice. Yeah, no, I get you. Yeah, I can't. I'm embarrassed I can't say that word. It's okay. Retributive. Yeah. Retributive. Close. Retributive. Yeah, it just sounds wrong, too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it sounds like not the it right sounds word. less of a word the more you say it. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I think that taxes... Um, I think taxes always come down to the same thing. It's like people want to see where their money's going. Yeah. When like someone gets their, when someone sees their actual taxes from their check, you know, like thirty percent of their check is gone. And a lot of them, you know, you're like, oh my god, I hate the government and their taxes. But then you're telling them like, well, ten percent is for Social Security. That's how you your grandmother's able to survive. And, and that's then, how you will get, you'll get that money it's, eventually. It's just like not not at this rate. Yeah, but well, not, it's not rate, a not, sustainable yeah. program. It's not a sustainable program, and the reason why it's not sustainable is not because it's not it's not funded correctly. It's the fact that people take from it to do other things in in the federal government. Yeah, the government that taxes for Social Security doesn't even spend all that money on Social Security. Right. Yeah, they take that money away. It's from. Just, that's why it's, it's just unfollowable. an exploitation. Yeah, it, it the tent was. I think good. when I think when government uses taxes for corporations and for anything that's corrupt in special interests, I think that that is exploitation because that's literally ri- the rich using the government to take money and give it back to them. But if right. but you see it as a assume... service, if you see it as a service where people actually get something in return, then how is it any different than any other form of cost that is forced onto you in society? How is being forced uh... to buy private insurance or forced to buy health care in order to get health care any less forceful than the government just funding it? through your taxes it's not any form of society is not under the consent of every single person every every single form of force is not is not bad consequences you know what i mean it just depends on the actual consequences of the action and right now taxes are kind of so kind of wasteful. you would say you're a consequentialist yeah yeah explain okay. what consequentialism for the audience it's essentially the actual consequences of your actions are more important than the intentions or anything like that. Like if you intend to, you know, yeah. taxes are to are for the betterment of society and this and that, but you're, it doesn't go towards anything that benefits society. Then that's not a good, I mean, obviously intentions matter, but at the end of the day, the consequences of the policies are what matters. If you have a waste program with that's good intention, it's a, it's still a bad program. So, so how do you how do you determine how long a program should be in place before you determine if it's consequentially a bad program or a good program? Well, the problem is it's not even usually the program itself's fault. It's 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 what if stagnant. it is though? No, I don't think so. It's usually cons- it, the the biggest problem with government is the fact that re- Republicans are going to fuck up whatever you try to pass. And, and that you're leaving those programs or those that funding up to the government's ability to pass expenditure budgets every year. And the Republicans will do anything in their power not to spend that money. So if you have all of your health care going through a single payer and you have conservatives fighting to defund the single payer program, people are going to lose health care and they won't have any other option, which is why I think there's there's different forms of private health care that can be beneficial in, in a supplemental towards our insurance or a single payer healthcare system. But at the end of the day, it is risky not to diversify, have not have more options for people to choose from. But I do think giving that power to private 
industry just trying just for that sake is also dangerous because they will use that and they will exploit that opportunity to grow their power and to continue to defund programs. So it's like Republicans are the problem in every situation. Not going to lie. <laughs> right. But don't you think that says something about the nature of the system itself that like, yeah, for sure. People's people's basic needs can be used as political fodder. I think this is all about fin- uh, money and, elections and finance and special interests and stuff like that. I, feel I don't like think that's... it's just about special interests, though. I think you have to start thinking of the government as its own special interest. I agree they're not that. just they're not just bought by corporations, although their interests overlap with corporations a decent amount of the time. And that's why corporations have so much power. Um, but there's also not 100 percent overlap with the interests of corporations and the interests sure. of the government. But at the end of the day, it's also about, it's just about power. And I think the government funded through special interests becomes even more powerful, stuff like that. But I think special interests, I don't know. And the thing is, special interests aren't even necessary to be corporate interests. It's just like, oh, justice is gone. Wow. What happened? I don't know. He'll probably be back. Well, we'll finish your thoughts, though. I don't know. I get distracted. (laughs) Well, I think that, like, in a nutshell, that corp- taxes are their intentions are good, but like Seth was saying, the consequences sometimes are not good. So I, I guess my my take on that was the topic essentially is that we have to constantly be auditing what are we being taxed on, and is that tax actually beneficial to the people or is it be- beneficial to the elites that's in Washington and the corporations? And so we have to always be mindful of that because right now, a lot. I think we need to move into a system that. This is crazy, but hear me out. This is. Um, we have, the te- the technology, the advancements in technology to start really deciding bills for ourselves. Um, yeah. We, you know, I I understand the whole concept of representation of government. But we have to understand that as a democracy, we're, our whole idealism of America is the pursuit of happiness. That's mm-hmm. what drives us as a country, and that's what keeps us keep innovating as a country. And I believe that we need to start talking about, well, why are we enacting policies that us as voters don't really agree with? And I think that this is something we can talk about with taxation is something like, why come we don't have the ability to vote on certain taxes yeah. nationally? For sure. You know, I, and, I, and I get it in the United States Constitution, the, the power to levy taxes with the Congress. Um, but I do it's think... the power to levy taxes, but it's not the power to decide how the taxes are spent. So it should still be ultimately up to the people. There's different forms of government. There's There's a... There's a direct de- democracy in which people would decide everything kind of for its society because they have ult- ultimate power. But then there's something called semi- semi-direct democracy, which still has representatives. You still would vote for somebody to vote on most of the issues because you don't have time to vote all day. You don't have time you, or the education to, to know what's good for society. But there are still okay. ballot initiatives that affect the American citizens that should be up to the American people ultimately and directly. And I think, and I think Florida did, and I think Florida did a good job of that. You know, a lot of people don't understand. Like we have marijuana. You know, Florida's super conservative, clearly because of the last election, but or not really super conservative, but leans conservative. The government is the voter yeah, base. Government. Yeah, majority. Yeah, exactly. So. But we were able to pass legislation that passed marijuana throughout the whole entire state. Did we? Yeah. Like yeah. like legalize weed? When did that happen? Did yeah, we turn out medical marijuana? We legalized medical marijuana okay. and um I think back in twenty sixteen. We we did that and we haven't statewide passed recreational marijuana yet, yeah. but for the most part, we've done that medical marijuana, which is usually the first step. 
Yeah. Um, I say that to say that but that the only reason why that was able to be enacted was because of a ballot initiative by um, Morgan and Morgan. I can't think of his name. That's on my head. But the 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 Morgan Morgan guy. If you guys ever see a personal injury lawyer in the south, in the south, um, he was able to pass a initiative that essentially got medical medical marijuana on the ballot, and then the majority of Floridians voted that we wanted it passed. Yeah. Now this is going what Seth was saying about the semi democracy. With these national with these initiative ballots, we were able to get it on the ballot and it was able to pass. But when it got through the Republican <laughs> legislature, it you know looked very different than what we voted for. But it still was passed, and we still had some kind of um, we had the ability to have medical marijuana in a, in the state. So I think that there is room for us to take this whole concept of ballot initiatives and make it national. Yeah, and I like, definitely agree. Yeah, and it's like start talking about issues that nationally as a country, Republicans and Democrats, we really don't disagree on. You know, and I think also like it's people. I think the last person that the last famous person to run on that issue was Tom Steyer, and he was proposing yeah. national ballot initiatives and. Democratic primary kind of laughed him off at first because everyone's like, huh, what if Republicans want to vote to genocide people and the, <laughs> then that passes? It's like, well, first of all, we would vote on what would be voted on in the first place. And yeah. I don't know. The, we also have civil liberties, which would protect anything from you voting on something unconstitutional, that kind of stuff. But there are issues that a majority of the people would ag- agree on that Right now, the legislation cannot pa- be passed because obviously there's such a stalemate in the Congress, and that's built into the system where it's impossible to vote on anything with under 60% of the Senate support. So it just doesn't make sense why we have a representative base that doesn't represent the Americans' values. And I think those issues are, should go directly to national ballots. So I think national ballots, like you're right, I think we can't do a full democracy we vote and everything like that we need a semi uh, we need a representation of government to actually look into how do we get something actually effectively done yeah. once a ballot initiative passed um, so I do agree with that I think that Democrats need to wake up to the idea that we are a more connected world like it doesn't take me long to jump on my phone and see what Chef is doing in California through Snapchat yeah. you know it's like so us, us not allowing our government to keep up with the times. We're just putting us further back behind China. And I like every week I say something about China. Yeah, but it's a good point. It's like uh, they're so afraid of us becoming like China where they just pass anything the government wants and the people have to fall in line that yeah. we've become so far in the opposite where nothing can pass, even when the people all agree and we need something to be done on certain issues that like we are completely stuck and we can't do anything to address the 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 will of the people or whatever so it's like it's just as ineffective and dangerous yeah like for example and a lot of people laugh that um um bernie sanders but uh, it's 2023 how come we still have national education it's like it's like we still let education be done by the states and it's like yeah we're not competing Texas is not competing with Florida anymore. Florida is not competing with New York anymore. No, America's competing with China, Germany, France, the global economy. But yet we have national, we have statewide education that is like we're not in a comp- competition with the rest of the world. Like yeah. we're not competing in states anymore. It's like I mean, well, parts of the country are more educated than other parts of the world and some of them are falling behind any other developed country. It doesn't make sense why we guarantee Americans the right or the pursuit of happiness, yet we don't allow them to be educated based on what state they're in. Like people in Arkansas are not getting an equivalent accurate education. They're having they're reading from textbooks from the nineteen eighties. And it doesn't make sense why somebody that's born in a a nice school district in California has such a better better likelihood of getting a good job and, and advancing themselves and following their own personal dreams because they just are live in the right neighborhood. And it doesn't really make sense. I think that there's some argument for localized standards or localized curriculum. 
that they can be voted on because I don't think everything should be decided by the federal government. But it doesn't make sense why schools are the school resources are funded so on on equally. They're alloc- alloc- allocated super inefficiently. It doesn't really make sense because wouldn't we want the poorer school districts to catch up to the rest of the world or the rest of the country when we want them to be at a certain level where we have a competitive workforce in each state because where we're falling behind is those states that can't compete because they have no money and no investment. Yeah, I just think that us as a country, we shouldn't be competing. We should compete. I'm sorry. Let me choose my words carefully. But we there should be a national standard that everyone should have a to understand your child needs to know this information by the time he graduates high school. And then once he knows this information, then guess what? Now the competition happens, but we start in the same playing field because there's no way you're telling me you're taking a kid from the ghetto and then you're taking some kid in California, Malibu or Beverly Hills and saying that that kid got the same education. Part of the kid in the ghetto might end up being in the same position as a kid in Beverly who studies extra hard and reads more than what's required in school or find ways to get other re- access to resources versus someone in Malibu doesn't need to do that. You know, that to me is what government's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the equalizer. Yeah. And that, that's the role of government. It's like, Hey, not everything in life is going to be fair and competition is a part of life, but you have to understand that if you're going to get in a competition to race, you have to have the same basic um, skill level. So it's like an athlete. It's like, you know, for example, and I'm a big NBA guy. I like watching the NBA. You know, when you join the NBA, everyone can play in the NBA. There is no yeah. the NBA players don't play with high school, like some guy who can't play in the NBA. They all play with NBA players. Mm-hmm. Some are better than the others but they have a basic level of skills that they can play in the NBA. Yeah. And that's every job. Like every job you go into, you have a basic level of skills. You don't know everything about your job. And there's other people who are probably better than you at your job. Or, you know, you may be better than others at your job. But there's a basic level of writing and <laughs> communicating that you all have at your job. Mm-hmm. So the idea that we, we still have education being this undivided among all these states. And it's like, it doesn't make sense. Standards, resources, all that should be nationalized. Conservatives view this issue like if the government isn't like doing actively banning you from being educated or advancing, they're like, well, if if a really poor person from the ghetto can make it all the way to the top, anyone can, as if every single person is, is gifted, even in the same neighborhoods with equal amounts of personal drive or ambition or effort yeah. it's not even like that because it it's it does have to do with your social influence and not every person is born into an equal opportunity family which is why we need something to like you said an equalizer something to give you in the, the step ahead because we don't want people to fail why do you want it's a, it, is it supposed to be like a, a scare tactic for people like look at this person on the street they're mm-hmm. terrible and their life isn't shit. And like, this is what's going to happen if you don't get your stuff together. And it's yet, that's how conservatives view stuff. But at the same time, they're the ones that won't stop complaining about how ugly the cities look and how there's homeless people and on the side of the street and we should do something about them. Isn't this what you wanted? Didn't you mm-hmm. want something to, to, to show people that they need to advance and we need to allow people to fail on their own? Isn't that what you wanted? Yet they're yeah. the ones complaining about how Democrats are not running the cities correctly. Yet they're the ones who are preventing anything from passing to give people money, to give them equal opportunities to live where they need to, public housing, stuff like that. It's, it's, it's hypocritical, everything that they say. Yeah, and it's it's not based on just 2023. That's why conservative stands for staying where you're at. And it, it doesn't make sense in 2023. We're trying to stay where we're at in 1960, where every other country is moving in 2023. It's yeah. like chat GBT is here. I don't know if you watched the congressional hearings this morning. No, um, yeah, even they asked for, hey, you guys need to come up with laws because AI is scary. I was watching a video this past weekend about um, the 
the guy who actually founded AI. He works for Google. And then mm-hmm. he um, he decided that he wanted to resign and explain to everyone how dangerous it is and how smart these things can get. And they yeah. can start eventually, they eventually get to the point where they can actually think for themselves. Not to go all sci-fi here, but it, it's true. That's eventually that's where they can get to. And this guy from ChatGPT, the CEO, is like, hey, this is this capability. This is what's going to be in five, ten years. You guys need to start thinking about legislation to regulate this stuff. And I'm pretty sure he talked over everyone head that was elected mm-hmm. there. They had no idea what he was talking about. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. When you have technologies like that that's so disruptive, why are we still using anarchic principles that our founding fathers would never have been dreamed of actually being the case. Yeah. No one can tell me someone from the 1775 or 1776 thought that there was going to be a computer that can literally generate work product within two minutes. Yeah. It's a completely different form of like government. It's going to end up affecting how we are run as a society. And I don't think that, I think that even the liberal response is to be retroactive and they let's fix the issue. Oh, we have a clear issue. Let's 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 do everything we can to just put the band-aid over this issue so it can heal on its own instead of getting ahead of issues before their problems. And that's like the exactly. issue of climate change where it's we're gonna have to spending billions and trillions of dollars on fixing every other disaster left and right caused by climate change. Yeah. Or or we could spend a little bit of money now and boost the economy and be the leaders of the world in the green energy and stuff like that. We can, we could, uh, we could grow from this. We could advance ourselves and, you know, build off of something instead of constantly spending money, fixing problems that could have been avoided. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the real issue with government waste is like just waiting for things to get to at their very worst where you have to yeah. spend a bunch of money. You shouldn't have to. No, I agree. I just think that sometimes with the conservative viewpoint of state rights, because that's what conservatives believe in, they believe in state rights, They're, they don't understand that certain principles cannot just be left to the state anymore because some some overarching principles affect the national um, direction of the country. And the reality is when we tend to ignore the national message, we are essentially saying, hey, okay, China, go ahead and do what you're doing. Um, we're just going to sit there and we're going to be the state isolationist while China is in there buying up half of Africa. I mean, exactly 80 percent of Africa, you know, doubling the size of their lands and having all their kids are hackers by the age of 14. <laughs> and it's like and there's a billion people there. And then we're sitting over here. We're talking about, well, I don't you know, we, I don't want you guys talking about if you're a boy or a girl. And that is the conversation we're having. Why China yeah. is up there literally are trying to annihilate us through social engineering. They talk about how like, oh, it's only one percent of the population is trans. How come you guys all all of your m- messaging is about trans rights and stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, uh, a boy is a, a boy. It's always been like that. Why are you focusing on that? If it's just one percent of the population, why is it? How do you think it's going to affect all of society? How come just this one issue is the left has gone woke and the woke mind virus? Like just about one issue, one political issue, and you guys yeah. think that you're in touch? You think that this matters to a majority of people? I mean, it matters to have civil liberties protected, yeah. but like all of a sudden. It's and that's the reason we have to push back is because they've turned it into an issue. It kind of was it was a less issue in our back area. I don't know. It was an issue for all of American history or whatever. But now it has now they're become like a target for Here's the right. Thing. LGBT they, has been an issue for the instance of a just human existence. Yeah, I don't understand why it's it, they're making it seem like some novel ideas like. The gay has not gay and bisexual has been around since history itself. For this sure, Abraham a, Lincoln was gay. Everybody's <laughs> if you look I it up, bro. That. There's yeah, there's a history of of there, no, I'm dead ass serious. There's like an entire Wikipedia section just about the sexuality of him because he used to like sleep in the same bed as one of his bodyguards and stuff like that. 
oh, and really? people are like they're good friends they're good pals <laughs> and it's, uh, nobody's gay or openly gay at that time you know oh exactly so, and so. just like i if you study the history of mozart um you know even going further further back yeah it's, it's just an, it's just a natural human in human human history gays yeah. and lgbtq has been around i mean this is not a new concept the reality is they use these concepts so that we can talk about it just like, to create you know, a divide if you're not gay then you obviously understand the straight plight so that's yeah. why they're just marketing off of that. And it's like, there's billions of people. You really think that they're all going to see society the same way and they're going to have the same sexuality as you and the same social standards when they're the ones trying to control how everyone behaves. And there, there was always the thing they tried to talk about liberals is like the big government and they're going to tell you how to act. And no, conservatives are the one that tell you how to behave and tell you how you should be expressing yourself in society they, they, they a take, top down way yeah they take the which is so funny <laughs> they take so conservatives takes this approach that we're going to be um conservative religious conservatives yeah right and then everything that we we talk about is going to be based on that mm -hmm. but if you look at just the hypocrisy and what they're saying it's when you look conservatives even if, you, even if you listen to Anthony Scully, uh, butchered that name, <laughs> the Chief Justice of um, the Supreme Court, uh, the late Chief Justice, not Chief Justice, excuse me, one of the late justices of the Supreme Court. Who are you talking about, Scalia? Uh, Scalia, thank you. Yeah. Um, he, his approach, the conservative approach, was to always take the Constitution as face value. So anything that he you read in the Constitution as the interpretation of it, you have to take it as with what it is, like how it's defined in 1700 is how it's supposed to be defined in 2023. When I when I look at conservatives and how they do that, with the, the same idealism with um, with um, the social religious issues and say, well, you know, gays and this and this and this and this is all against our religion. And I listen to this concept, I think to myself, like, that's hypocritical because if you're going to take that stand, then you have to keep the same stand once the Constitution says that there should be a separation between church and state. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, like, it's, not, it's not the Constitution technically that says the church and state thing. Isn't that just like a letter from Jefferson or something like that, that we take that? Or am I wrong? No. I don't know, I don't know if there's any like constitutional article about the separation of church and state. I think there's. it's about the... Um, the inclusion of religious activity and like uh, freedom of association, but it doesn't technically say a separation of church and state, but it, it should be in, ingrained in the constitution well, regardless. It, Cause if you take like religious literalism, like if you really, really believe in the Bible to be biblically accurate, then you're okay with all of the people that were dating 14 year olds. Like Mary was like 14. Yeah. And like, you're okay with, so you're okay with pedophilia you're okay with all this there's david king david molested and murdered and like you're okay what where do you draw the line and like what's okay in the bible because what, they're what, picking arbitrarily it's like, well i don't want to say nothing's wrong with christianity look yeah if you're christian i mean i, I you grew up christian i grew up christian um up so christian. there's nothing yeah there's nothing wrong with the christian the christian religion what I'm saying it, is, it's nothing wrong in inherently in calling yourself a Christian. Depends on what you mean. Yeah, well, if you take uh, it literally, you're gonna have some crazy effed up views. And the, even the LGBTQ issue, they they take it back to like Sodom and Gomorrah. When if you actually look historically at the issue that was going on there, and it wasn't about homosexuality, mm -hmm. it was about it. I mean, it was about men molesting little boys and little girls and that yeah. was that was the sodomy that they saw it wasn't that they were gay it was because they were being exploited by adults and it was children it was that was the issue that both the cities got burned for it wasn't because they were being free and being gay and drinking alcohol and that's not why god destroyed the city it was yeah. for actual evil it, yeah and they oh just sort of skip over that part yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, and that's why we shouldn't be intermingling it. And to answer your question earlier, 
is there a direct uh, words that said that? No, there's no direct words that said in the Constitution, but there is um, the Establishment Clause that okay. shall make no laws respecting the establishment of religion. Yeah, so there's right. a clear, there's a clear edict that says that they wanted it to be separate. You're definitely right. They don't want a state mandated religion, which exactly. is what uh, like the national conservatives or the, the Christian nationalists just ignore completely and don't care about. And they, yeah. they, they ha- all their problems with Muslims is about the state mandated Islam and how they're taking Sharia law, biblical law, literally. You know, the first half of the Muslim religion is the Christian Bible. Yes. And they and that's all the stuff that they use to reference their all the crimes and stuff that is committed in Muslim countries. It's from the same parts of the Bible and maybe they have some other bad parts in the Quran as well, but like it's it's religious literalism. That's the problem. It's fundamentalism and there's not a big difference between the white nationalists in Arkansas and the Taliban fundamentalists in these Afghanistan country or, or in the Middle okay. East or anything like that. Like that's, that's the same people they're doing the same. They're still taking advantage of young men who are feeling alienated and they're still militarizing them for political reasons. It's not yeah. any difference at all. They've many people have been killed in, in the name of white supremacy. It's not an, a different, it's just a different country in a different social conflict essentially yeah no i agree i agree with you that's why we should it should always be separate it's like because no matter what religions change ideologies change um i can tell you there's almost 20 different church christian denominations (laughs) it's it's like ideologies change new religions new theories pop up but the reality is the american in my opinion the american the America that I see is one that's a melting pot of many cultures to make one. And that's what, that's what we are. And for us to allow religion to keep us, to separate us, it's really going against what the Father and Fathers envisioned for this country. We we're supposed to be a country where we took diversity, um, even though it wasn't, let me preface that, even though they wasn't thinking about black people back then <laughs> when they talk about diversity. But the, the idealism is that diversity is to hold true in America and our differences what makes us what sets us apart from the rest of the world. Yeah, everything that's great about America is American it's the American dream. It's a, it's immigration. It's yeah. the fact that we are not an ethnic country. We are a country of multi different ethnicities, countries of origin, and we don't have a real American culture. It is a melting pot of a bunch of different European, yep. South American, Central African. American cultures, African culture. Of African culture is ginormous. The uh, like the yeah. African Americans shaped most of American culture. Yeah, African and European culture, Asian American. Because I, I love, I love when I traveled because you could really see. America to what it is. It's like the North had the white European African culture, the South is African and um, Southern European culture. And then you had um, California, which has the Asian culture. And it's, yeah. And then the and Southern like, you know, has the Mexican culture yeah. mixed in with it. So you That's can kind see of that. why America dominates. It's like, you don't see a bunch of people from China, like, Ooh, let's, let's immigrate to Norway. Just because they have a great, they have a great economy and stuff like that, but they're not a melting pot of culture where you can be whatever you want in the the country. You can find communities of like minded people, and you can live there freely, and you can have, you can live your own life however you would desire. But but at the end of the day, I mean, it's yeah, there is economic reasons too, and we have such a giant land of opportunity for anybody. It's not just for white blooded Americans that have been here for a certain white blood, <laughs> white blooded, <America>. whatever <laughs> white Americans, white red blooded Americans. Who, who, they're the real Americans. How, why? Because they were here in the 1600s. Do you know who else is here in the 1600s? The, they're slaves. So how is, how is the white people that came here any more important than the, yeah. the African-Americans that they brought here? How is the Americans. 
Yeah. yeah Native Americans are way more American than any <laughs> of all you of us. <laughs> Mayflower descendants or whatever. Yeah. Like but they, that's, just... that's why if you can't if you take anything any of their ideas to the logical conclusion, you see they're hypocrites and they don't understand what they even believe. Yeah, and that brings me to my title forty two and we'll end it like this on the show on this one. It's just that look, I get immigration is a problem and immigration has its um its downfalls and we should be a law of nations and we should have some kind of regulation towards the border. But at the end of the day, let's never forget that this country was built on immigration. Yeah. Um, everyone here is either black from Africa or some descendant of Africans or white European or Native American and or Asian Pacific. There's yeah, in the Pacific three, side, for sure. Yeah, there's one of those four regions you came from. Um, yeah. And the reality is all four of us coming together, the cultures is what define who we are. So, and I even left out, sorry, even Native American, Mexican culture. Mm -hmm. My point being is that we're all, we all bring something to the idealism of America. And when we come out and we try to, you know, demonify immigration and saying that there's certain groups that are not allowed and other groups are allowed, or we're saying that we don't want people from the shithole country of Haiti. And then yeah. we these, take it from other countries. Like these we conservatives want are like, oh, these people in their group identifies. I, I want to judge a person by their character, not their color. Or, like they pull the MLK quote anytime we talk about how there's institutional racism or something yeah. like that. Yeah, anytime immigration is, is coming, they talk about the people as if they're a giant collective of the country that they come from as if they're not individuals and that are seeking opportunity. They, they just see them as a group. That's not their group. And they don't think that they are deserve the same amount of rights because of where you're born, that's not, you don't control that. How is yeah. that fair? And they want to be Americans when, when the Republicans stand, can't stop complaining about America. I mean, you can move if you don't like how the country and the demographics are changing. If you hate America so much, go go to Europe, bro. Yeah. But I want America with immigrants, and I want them to be full of people who want to be Americans and want to see our country get better and not just to consolidate your wealth. Exactly. No, I, I love it. And like I said, we didn't really go dive deep into Title 42 tonight, guys, because there were so many um, side ish, very interesting side topics. Yeah. But we will next week to dive a little bit deeper into immigration policies. Um, I do think I do believe in a pathway to citizenship. I really want to get Seth's viewpoint on that and some of the cool um, progressive plans that you know are out there that we can discuss. Um, but that with that being said, I'll let Seth say the final word for tonight. I feel like my last rant was was pretty uh, pretty much how I was feeling. I feel like. Uh, I don't know. We'll definitely try to get some new guests on. I like yeah. our guests so far, but I do want to diversify as if it's as our uh, topic has been going. You know, we yeah. got to get a lot of different kinds of people in a lot of different perspectives. Because let me try. Know, I I disagree a lot with justice on certain forms of government and stuff like that. Even if we agree on a, a vast majority, it's really important because all my ideas come from other people. And come from them changing my mind over time. And it doesn't really happen if you don't have conversations with people you disagree with slightly. You know what I mean? Yeah. If people get friends that are, you agree with enough that you give them trust to, to have a good perspective and to enlighten you in changing your own mind. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, I would love to do that. Um, talk about. I mean, we're working on it this week. I think I might have a guest on um, an immigration uh, who does work. That's a good idea. Because so, I'm not super knowledgeable. I just have ideals. Yeah, I think that would be great for the, the audience. Um, and like I, I want to say thank you guys for people who have been following us. I mean, we've, uh, we've got 200 views on YouTube. It's closer That's to 300 awesome. now. Close to 300. Just in the last yeah. video. Just in the last video. So we're growing there. I mean, obviously, we, we're, we're pretty popular on Twitter. But uh, yeah. we're still – we're trying to – expand our audience to different segments so we can keep talking about the progressive movement. Um, and so we've been 
working uh, well Seth actually has been working really hard to get the YouTube going and um and we're going to continue to work on that and make sure we're expanding our audience more um, I'm even going to start going out and probably going back out and doing some speeches and stuff like that um uh which as, we could post on the YouTube channel for sure yes uh which we'll I yeah, keep we everybody will. in touch with uh with their messages yes um you know, I've been kind of hibernating. So I think it's time for me to get out. And so he's um, been in the same room in front of the same pool for, <laughs> for the last couple of months. I mean, so, I've been in the same room too. Yeah. Right. But, you but my room is real. You're, well, this is <laughs> my reality is real. <laughs> yeah. Your reality is real. <laughs> my virtual reality, my metaverse. He likes to imagine he's in front of that pool and that's right. real to him. In this California type style house, kind of looks like yeah, it looks more like California than Florida. It uh, definitely looks like California when in Florida. Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna sign out, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. All right, everybody, have a good week.